Good morning. Welcome to the Medina County Commissioner's meeting. We'll call our meeting to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In our prayer for the morning, Heavenly Father, we beseech your divine guidance in this meeting. Keep us ever mindful of our obligations. Grant us, dear Lord, wisdom, tolerance, and courage that we may well serve our county and fulfill our trust. Amen. Steve, could I have a motion to approve the minutes? Sure. Move to approve the minutes of uh, June 8th as well as uh, June 9th. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Hambly? Yes. Sledek? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Thank you. We'll move into our resolutions this morning. And uh, Andy, for Andy Conrad, we have Josh up in our county engineer's office. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Um, just have two today. Uh, the first one um, is to resolution authorizing Medina County Engineer to purchase two new model year cabin chassis for dump, uh, dump truck plow and spreader and hydraulics. Uh, purpose of this is, I don't know how much you guys have been in with the vehicles lately, but they're so backed up. These we'll put in at four now. They're holding a slot for us. We'll put in now. We won't receive them until probably the end of spring next year. Um, so if we don't get in line, we'll be way behind on our trucks. And we have some that are starting to age down there. So that's the purpose, trying to stay ahead of the ball game here, then falling behind. And the second one, we'll be closing Dunham Road between Avon Lake Road and Vandemark. We'll be replacing a culvert. We'll be setting a new box culvert there. And then we have several uh, permits, uh, heavy construction season, obviously, at this time. So there's quite the list of permits that have been issued over the last week. I move to approve the two resolutions. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Any questions? Roll call. Family? Yes. Sweater? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Thank Thanks, you. Josh. Thank you. Take care. Have a great week. Thank you. You too. Uh, next up, we have Amy Lane Galvin, our Assistant County Administrator. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. I have four resolutions for your consideration this morning. The first one is a final adjusting change order for the Medina County Monopole steel tower and antenna. This was installed at the Hinkley Township site. The original contract for that monopole erection was to Spielman Electric in the amount of 117867 This is actually a net deduct change order in the amount of 3721 to drop that down to 114145 uh, The second resolution is allowing expenses of the county engineer. This is for arborist training for two staff members here in Medina. The third resolution is allowing expenses of county officials. This is for two members of the Juvenile Detention Center staff to attend a verbal de-escalation and crisis communication skills training. And then the fourth and final resolution is approval of the claims for the week in the amount of $1,343,777.36. Any questions? Roll call, please. Hambly? Yes. Sweating? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Next, we have Holly Muren, our Human Resources Director. Good morning, Holly. Good morning. On our personal changes resolution today, we have one new hire in sanitary, 11 rate increases, six in sanitary, two at county home, two at office for older adults, and one in animal shelter. One transfer between agencies in building and one resignation in sanitary. I move to approve. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Any questions? Roll call, please. Hambly? Yes. Sweaty? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Holly. You. Next, we have Scott Miller, County Administrator. Good morning, Scott. Good morning. I just have two resolutions for you today. Uh, first resolution is authorizing a change order, uh, number two, for the Sharon Township Water and Sanitary Improvement District. This is uh, the, the Sharon Township project that they're doing, and they hit rock, so they had to open cut versus boring. So it's increasing. The change order is for $82,954.64. 
And the second resolution is authorizing the sanitary engineer to enter into an agreement with Rolling in Hasavar for professional design services to create a base map uh, for a water main project along Center Road. Uh, this is an amount not to exceed $3,950. Uh, move to approve uh, both resolutions. Second. Motion to second. Any questions? Roll call. Hambly? Yes. Sweating? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. All right, we'll move into our department updates. First, we have Richard Nelson from our uh, chief building official. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Richard. I'm assured now that you have your reports for this month. All right. <laughs> that was my bad last month. Uh, Alicia sent it to me, and I was supposed to forward it along. Uh, so, value of construction projects is uh, showing a, a, a large amount down from last May that's uh, skewed down because of two new schools were issued last May. So that was a $34 million uh, jump last May and makes, makes this May look odd. Uh, moving down to the home values, still staying right up there at around 430000 average. Uh, down down the page, uh, new home starts still healthy for May, showing showing like we'll be uh, on target for about 400 or more new homes this year, probably 420 likely. Uh, second page is monthly receipts, a uh, little bit up, almost 12 percent up from last May. Third page is uh, year to date receipts is is nicely well up at over 14 percent year to date so that's looking good uh, the rest of the pages are minutia per townships and specific uh, commercial projects uh, otherwise in the department we're doing fine doing good um, our uh, residential reviews are still just at two or three days. Uh, Tom moved up to RBO, and he's doing surprisingly very well. Um, it's amazing the difference in his communicative skills and uh, his overall knowledge and just being a good, reasonable person. He's doing a real good job there. I'm pleasantly surprised. Uh, so we're doing good. Commercials still doing pretty good. I think we're probably turning those around in um, about 18 days, I, I do believe. I didn't actually check, but uh, there's only one or two that need my action right now. And, and so Richard, those are all good. going outside, correct? Correct, they are. Yeah. Yes, they do. Uh, we're required. So they at least get one look at them, sometimes two looks at them but okay. typically just one and then uh and then and then i can take action from there so yeah yeah everything's quite good so with the number of permits up year over year by 280 um your your everything has been kept up and it sounds like yeah you know, process <laughs> system right yes good Super. yeah doing good Excellent. moving right along any other questions nope Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Richard. you, Richard. Have a good day. Uh, next, we have Christina Fazio from EMA. Good morning. Good morning, Christina. There is one for each of you, including Rhonda. So from my last visit, um, what you have in front of you, we talked about, um, I think that Commissioner Hudson asked about team membership mm -hmm. for our disciplines and then um, inventory. So what you have in front of you um, is the bulk of the document is the team member breakdown, their level of training, and then our capabilities. But um, we'll start off with um, um, RFQs for our building. The first round of requests for RFQs, we received one. 
so we ended up sending that one back, doing another advertisement, um, and then that deadline was last Friday. We have three RFQs now. So um, when it comes to the Chippewa building, hopefully one so of those. You have, you have three responses? We have three RFQs. responses now from the second round of advertising. So um, Weber Murphy Fox from Cleveland, um, MPG from Fairlawn, and then TC was the first original um, uh, proposal. They're from Akron, so we'll see what comes of that. Um, May 21st, uh, we hosted the Northeast Sector, the director's meeting um, at the building. It was uh, very well received. It's kind of interesting when you have um, EMAs from other counties that, that are co-located, similar to what we were at the jail. Um, when you're able to have your own building, the, the envy just comes to the comes forward. It's, it was really a, f a fun day for um, surrounding directors to be happy for you that you have your own location. So that was a good day. So the sector meeting is something that we do every other month and, and the different counties will host. Um, and then participants with those meetings is usually the National Weather Service and Ohio EMA. So those are always fun events. So that was a successful meeting that we had on May 21st. And then knowing that COVID is starting to um, kind of wind down, we attended our first uh, June Safety Forces first Friday in Wadsworth. So um, probably not the best attendance. They probably wanted to have a little bit more, but um, you know that things are starting to open up when those kind of events are, are getting planned. So uh, moving on to the all hazards team, you can see that we have um, fully operational hazmat, rope rescue, and confined space trench, um, a drone team, UAV is the proper name, but it's a drone team, structural collapse, water, and FI FIU. And then what I did, when we defined how many members are on each team, and then the um, break it down even further, who has technician training, um, instead of just um, giving you those stats, what I wanted to do is explain what technician training is. So with most of these disciplines, there's an awareness level of training, which is just being able to recognize that a house is on fire. Sometimes it's that simplistic. So when you move on to additional levels of training, there's technician level and then operations level. So the rest of that document is explaining what that technician level is. Most incidents that happen in Medina County are never going to be big enough to prompt operations level. And if there would be an incident that's that large, you'd end up calling for uh, mutual aid from outside um, entities that probably have full-time departments. So operation level training is a huge commitment and an expense for most of the fire departments. So if anybody has questions from um, those explanations, I can always bring back information for my next visit. So when you see this technician level training, when the fire department personnel that are part of the all hazards team, everything that the fire departments do um, are the activities and their capabilities are done to a standard, which is the NFPA standards. So some of these technician explanations um, even refer to the specific standard for NFPA training. And then the last page of that is uh, Commissioner Hudson again asked for the team call outs for the year. So this, what I'll bring to um, the group every quarter is the up to date um, call outs for the year. So this includes emergency management, us taking mobile command to an incident. It may not have prompted an all hazards team call out, but it's an, um, an EMA staff call out. Most of the time when, when we're called out, it's us bringing mobile command and being a support or logistics um, support entity for responders. So some of those are some of those are pretty specific. Um, you know, when you look at Person and Pond, Wayne County Dive Team also assisted. So you'll see calls like that. The dive team. We don't have a dive team in Medina County, and that's an example of us having a call for mutual aid from an outside county for a resource um, that we're not, not able to provide locally. CART team, child abduction response team. You'll see that for number 13 in Lodi. What, so, what's the chief's box? Chief's box is where if a community that has a larger event, they just need um, command staff. Um, 
chiefs are able to call upon other chiefs to come and assist. So if they need some leadership, added leadership, they have enough men in the field to be able to mitigate an incident, but they want to be able to bounce um, that leadership um, process, leadership decision-making process. The chief's boxes, that um, it's a page group, and whatever chiefs are available, they can go into the community and assist that, that community fire chief with their decision-making. So sometimes if you, you have a structure fire, you have the A, B, C, D side, they'll call for a chief's box to stand on one of the other sides to just you know make sure that there isn't something safety-wise going on that they're looking. You only have that one guy. Um, the fire chief ultimately respons being responsible to have a, a peer be able to assist in a larger event. That's what that chief's box does for them. Thank you. Yep. So what CART team, we're assisting the, so Child Reduction Response Team, that's a countywide team of mostly law enforcement personnel. Um, and they meet monthly. Um, it's spearheaded by the Sheriff's Department, specifically Samuel Mernick and the Detective Bureau. We're assisting them tomorrow do, to do a tabletop exercise to test um, um, CART capability, see what their, um, what their training has, will bring forth um, to this point and then see what additional training may need to come out of that exercise after tomorrow. So that, that'll be kind of a fun. We're taking um, mobile command over to the sheriff's office doing a CART team call out and then we are simulating with some of our EMA volunteers witness we're setting up a, um, the EOC and all the phone lines are going to be set up in the EOC and then we're simulating outside callers as witnesses. So our callers, our volunteers will be sitting in mobile command making those fake calls into the EOC that they, they have sightings of a, of a suspect or and it, those be some silly calls that come in there too but that'll be a kind of a fun tabletop that we're facilitating tomorrow. And that's what I have for you. Does anybody have any questions? Thank no? You. Thank okay. You. All right. Anything that you want me to bring back for the next time? I already have stuff that I'm thinking of, but anything specific? Um, the, you know, the one thing I'm, I guess, particularly interested in is the number of call outs. So, yeah. can you come back? I would just bring those stats. Yeah, I'll keep bringing that stuff yeah. too. Great. Okay. All right. Thank Excellent. you. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Christina. All right. We will move on into public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Krista. I, I knew that. <laughs> So we have a special guest, Krista Wazowski from our health department. Yeah. I have to tell you, you know, um, when Christina was saying that other counties were envious of your location, I think other counties are just in general envious of Medina County and how well we work together. And truly, coming into this COVID business, who would have guessed this would have happened, but um, to have such good partners and to have an EMA. Um, that was right there alongside us as we got our our own um, operation center up and running and, and a lot of moving parts. So just very briefly, I wanted to let you guys know, since I'm not doing my Tuesday updates, a lot of the information is on our website, but I thought I'd give, it, give you a chance if you had questions for me. We are at 52% of our, all of our county residents have at least one dose of vaccine, which is above the state average, and it, and it's bode ve it bodes very well for us. You can see in our numbers declining. We've had days where we only had like one case. So I think last week we were at 37 total cases, and we haven't been there since this time last year. The difference being this time last year, um, we had restrictions in place. We were trying to, to keep large groups from meeting. There's a lot of things happening, and we also didn't have the protection of vaccines. So we knew that that level was going to increase. And what we're seeing now is this decrease, and we've seen it for several weeks, and it's really good for us as a county. Um, the health department is, however, we are out there still vaccinating, and we really do encourage all of our residents um, to consider becoming vaccinated. We had um, 16 locations in the first two weeks of June that we went out to, and we'll have 40 by the end of the month. So um, public health likes to say we're playing small ball right now. We are going out to really hyper-local small places for just a couple of hours to give people the opportunity maybe that don't live near a pharmacy or can't get into a doctor's office easily. Um, so this week, I want to let you know we're going to be at York Township Hall. We're at Highland Middle School. We'll be at Buffalo Creek, Wadsworth and Bueller's. We're putting a tent up in their parking lot and doing a little drive-through for them down in Wadsworth in the evening. 
um, trying to easy access off the highway, trying to get people on their way home or, or moving through the area. We'll be out at Chatham. We're at the Buckeye Library. We have a nice partnership with um, Buckeye. Highland and Lodi libraries and we selected those because they are further away from other pharmacy partners or locations where residents in those areas could easily get a vaccine. So we'll be at farmers markets um, this month, um, Westfield Fire, we're going back down there. Um, we're, doing, we're working with um, Union Square to do a special event with them. So um, I just wanted you to know that um, we're still out there and we're going to continue vaccinating through the summer and giving people that opportunity opportunity. Um, I know Commissioner Hudson, we had talked very briefly before the meeting about um, kind of what, what's in store for the fall. Um, the higher our percentage of vaccination, the better protected we're going to be, the better able we're going to be to weather as a community anything that happens with variants. Um, the health department is monitoring variants. We do, um, there are three variants that we've seen in the county so far. Um, certainly the UK variant, the California, the California variants, and the Brazil strain. Um, most of them are the UK variant that we've seen. Um, I know today there's a lot in the news about a Delta variant being found in Hawaii. Um, viruses move. I mean, there's no, nobody is thinking that the U.S. is going to be, is going to, you know, put up a border and, and we're not going to have that Delta variant coming into our, into our country. So, um, but the best thing that we can do right now um, is to encourage vaccination and to also, honestly, I want people to have a good summer. I really, I want people to see one another without our masks on. I want people to enjoy and reconnect and, and do things that are really good for their mental health. Um, because that's going to be important moving into the fall when we when we kind of see what the fall brings for us. And I really don't want people to worry about the fall. You can let me worry about the fall, and I'll let you know if you need to worry. But I just, I really want people to enjoy their summer. <laughs> so um, so I, that's really all I have. Uh, there was one other item that I did want to mention just as a just as a point, the Board of Health, I just want to let you know, the Board of Health is considering we have our, we have a 10-year levy, and that 10-year levy will be expiring, and they have been discussing what to do with that. It'll be, they'll be talking about it at their meeting um, next Monday night, and then I'll have something um, more detailed to come back to you with, but I just wanted to let you know that, yeah, just when, as a courtesy. Um, it'll be up in 2020. So this fall will be the first time that we could put it on. It's a 2022. Yeah, it's been on the ballot since 1992. So it's a 0 0.7, but it has a 0.3 effectiveness. So, and it's about 16% of our of our annual budget from that levy. I hope you know how much all of us appreciate your leadership in the last year and a half. It's been extraordinary. I've. I've been very, I've been happy to be your health commissioner, and um, and we've gotten to know each other really well over the course of the year. I feel like just just with everything, and and I'm and, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that other communities are very envious of what we have here in the county. So, so Krista, yep. if a if a group wants to host one of the clinics, how absolutely would you arrange that with sure. The department? Call our main number, option two, and say you'd like to host a clinic. Yep, we will. We will go out. We'll do book clubs. We'll do garden garden parties. We'll do car shows. We'll you you name it. You have a group of folks. You let us know. Um, I I will tell you. Um, we're doing uh, on the 24th at the fairgrounds. We'll have all three. We'll have Moderna, Pfizer, and Johnson and Johnson at that location. Right now, we've just been bringing out um, Pfizer and Johnson and Johnson. Um, just because Pfizer's broad, we, we can do 12 and up with Pfizer. So we've been bringing Pfizer places, but we do know that some people might prefer Moderna. So we have that set up and we'll have Moderna and we'll be continuing to offer those. But yeah, you tell us uh, what brand, where, how many people, we'll send out a nurse to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Any, any thoughts about doing something at the, uh, during the fair? Well, you know, I've been working with the, I've been working with the fair on kind of, I, our last meeting for organizing the fair, it, it was sort of this surreal, we, we, can, we can do that. <laughs> so um, so that, was, that was nice. Um, we've not really talked about it. I, you know, I'd, I'd have to ask the fair board if they're open to that, but certainly I would love to staff and make that available to folks. Absolutely. Well, you have a booth. 
in the fair, don't you normally? Well, them? you know, we haven't had a booth in recent years. We have a, we actually have a breastfeeding area that we man and we staff for, for women and moms who are out there at the fairgrounds. But we could certainly talk to the fair about that. Yeah. That makes some sense. Easy. Could, yeah, try sure. to promote it. And yeah. We, uh, that is one of the, the biggest events. It is. It certainly is. It's a big year, anniversary, year. anniversary year. Big anniversary year this year. Yeah. 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 It'll be the place to be this summer. I'm not sure we want to do a vaccination night, but. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But but to your point, make it easily available. Tickets, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Monster it is. Really, it is. Right? <laughs> there you go. Our own vaccine. Uh, one other question for yeah. you, Krista. So in the fall, mm -hmm. when the the I'll just refer to it as the normal flu shot comes out. Yes. Will there be a component in that shot for a booster for COVID, or is that going to be a separate uh, booster? So we normally we would be ordering our fall vaccine. We've not ordered fall vaccine. There. I don't know. I. I my gut says there's probably going to be a standalone flu vaccine for individuals who just want a flu shot. And I know that Pfizer's been talking about a combination flu and COVID vaccine together. Would that look like a would that look like a booster? Would that be a first dose of a two dose? I, those are things that I don't I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have to kind of wait and see. A little that bit. require uh, I guess emergency approval though, if they did a, a combination, correct? It would because I don't believe they would be past the EUA time frame for it to be like a standard yeah. FDA approved vaccine at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so more to follow on that one. More to follow on that. Uh, sure. Yeah, okay. absolutely. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. It's good you, to Chris. see you. We absolutely. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we'll move into public comment. Stan, do you have public comment? You want you do not? Okay. Kathy, you have public comment you'd like to make? Yeah, I'm the only one that has You're it. You got five minutes. Well, it won't take me too long. So do you want me to say Kathy Jones to Sharon Township again? Yes, please. Okay, I just did. Okay. So um, I just have, um, actually, it's a question of you. Um, I understand that April 27th um, at the commissioner's meeting, discussion was had about um, drilling at, I believe, 9619 Friendsville Road, and you were going to see about getting authorization, um, talking to the prosecutor, or talking to, um, Scott had mentioned um, that he received a request to lease commissioner's property on Friendsville Road for drilling, mm -hmm. and he was going to um, ask the commissioners if he could pursue this and send a lease firm sent to a firm specializing oil leases for review. So I just wanted to know um, the status of it. Has that property, has their property been on Friendsville Road leased for uh, drilling? Um, <clears throat> uh, well, actually, it's not on Friendsville Road. It was oh. at the county home, was it not, Scott? No, it was that piece of property up there on Friendsville. Oh, down, down, okay, all right. Um, Kathy, do you have any other questions? No, that's it. But um, okay. so, so if you don't, you have any other comment you'd like to make? Well, I I wondered if if it has gone through, if it's been approved, and if it was, if any of the residents okay. around. Yeah, well, I was. Okay. If, if you don't have any other comment, I do Kathy? have one other question. Okay. Was it for drilling for um, hydro, hydro, hydro horizontal horizontal welling or uh, vertical wells? Do you know what the drilling was for? I know it's oil and gas. Yeah, no, All right. That's, that's yeah, so so Kathy, if, if those are your questions, yes. if you'll take a seat, I will have Scott come up and address them. Okay, great. Thanks. Right. Thank I you. appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm glad everybody's well and survived COVID. It's good to be back, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know, but it's good to be back. Here, <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. It's all right. So it is for uh, vertical drilling? And the lease is currently under review by a law firm that specializes in um, oil, oil, and gas oil and gas leases. So that's where we currently stand. Excuse me. Thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm. um, any other public comment? Hearing none, we'll move into discussion session. Scott, do you have anything for discussion? Stephen? 
John, Amy, Richard, Colleen. We, we do have that um, uh, for that Lodi Hospital mm -hmm. 340B yes. program. Yeah. Did you want to come up and address that? I know you've had some communication with uh, uh, Cleveland Clinic on this. They approach us. This involves uh, yeah, I've had a program for uh, discounted uh, pharmaceuticals. I've gotten. I've had some communications with Michael, but I haven't gotten any of the documents yet. So, but this is a program that would provide um, low-cost pharmaceuticals to low and moderate-income uh, residents. So, once I get the uh, information, I'll be providing you with a memo with the information attached that we can discuss. Yeah. Okay. As I understand it, yeah, the, the program closes the, the, uh, July 1st. They have to have this, so at least approval for us. Summit County and Cuyahoga County have already approved through their executive, uh, they have a county executive, uh, the approach to the county commissioners uh, for this program, uh, not only in addition to a reduced uh, rate that they pass on to the consumer for uh, various uh, pharmaceuticals, but likewise the, the hospital is required to qualify to have that, that program to also do some additional community uh, uh, outreach for low and moderate incomes, such as screenings and things like that. So is this something that's, that's new? It requires the county to, to, for this federal program, requires the county to sign off on it. It's new for us, but not new uh, uh, generally. But they've included Lodi Hospital because they're part of the Cleveland Clinic system. Right. So you'll have more information for us. Oh, yeah, I'll have more information to you. And like Steve said, July 1st, so there may be a resolution next week. And if, if you want to discuss if you want to discuss it, um, we can discuss it prior to the passage of the resolution. Okay. They just need an, MM, an MOU yeah. for, their, for their certification. Okay. The best. All right. Uh, do we want to, Scott, as long as you're up here, do we want to talk about the scorecard? I, I, I didn't bring it out because I didn't bring it out. I didn't bring it out. I looked at it and go, okay, I'll review it. And, all right. So we want to we want to talk about it next time because yes. we're, we're getting close sure, to uh, sure. July yeah. 9th. Next so, time we'll be All right. So we'll put this on the agenda for discussion on it. That'll for, be good for next week. Okay. okay. I mean, it's, it's basically what what we talked about. Mm -hmm. So it's just uh, one through twenty five. Um, it will have the project or the the request. Um, and the department or the agency that's making the request. It has whether or not it complies with the uh, requirements for ARP funding. And then it's just a matter of you putting in, well, what we'll do is we'll provide, we'll go in, we'll fill in all the information, um, give each of you a packet that will have all the projects uh, for the, the, that were requested. And then you can just go through <clears throat> and you'll score each one individually you'll give them to amy and i and we will <clears throat> then go ahead and we will have a spreadsheet with each project and with your scores and then we'll have a total score for each project and then we'll sort that with the highest first and then we'll just go down until we you know we'll pr give that to you so you can see how each project scored and if then if there are projects that you want to discuss we can discuss um well, we will discuss it. Um, you know, here are the scores, here are the projects, and then at that point, we'll start um, funding projects. So, and again, we're, since we're getting money in two different, two different um, years. years, two different disbursements, um, what we'll do is we'll probably the first seventeen and a half million dollars, then next year, because I'm sure that you know between now and then we'll get additional applications and additional needs so you know we may go through that process again anything that wasn't funded the first time through will be resubmitted and then any new applications will score those and then we'll do the same process have we got a lot of additional requests i've only received one additional request i'm looking at it quickly i think the system that he's proposed does prevent one of us scoring something 447 and the other scoring it three. You know, you know, you know what I mean. Like it, it does keep it more a little bit more consistency. The, the, the one element that I, 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 I go ahead a question, I guess, is uh, we have in there a scoring a ranking based upon the uh, criteria on whether they're a county agency or a non-county agency. 
And so uh, that kind of forces us to say, <laughs> oh no, county agencies count more uh, than a non-county agency, yet it may have, a, you know, like I said, a higher value uh, in, in effect uh, on, on the community. I mean, we've got, uh, I guess, a health department. I guess that's a county agency. Yeah. Uh, we don't appoint them, uh, but we do are their uh, taxing authority. But I would count them as a county agency. Right, right. yeah. yeah. Yes. But is the park district a county agency? Yeah. I would say, okay, I would right. say We don't fund yes. them. We don't point their... We're, we're not their taxing authority. So that's that's where I started to say, uh, and then what if we get proposals from But others? one of our judges yeah. does appoint to them. Well, that's true. Right, that's true. right. That's true. Yeah. So I guess that, that's why I start to, to look as like, are we going to start ranking as to which is a more important agency? Uh, all have well, I, well, I think you look yeah. at the other items on there. Yeah, well, yeah I know the other items. Yeah, yeah. You'll, yeah. you'll yeah. separate those. Right, one right. Yeah. So, so that's. Um, but that's the beauty of the scoring system is, okay. you know, you may think that the park district, you know, may rank up. A little bit lower than another agency, whereas Colleen may think, "Hey, that's you know, that's yeah. great." So there's a 25. So that's that's how, you know, it, it works well. Well, it, Frank, for me, it's going to have no effect whatsoever on the on the evalu evaluating it. But that's you know, that's where I'll be at. Right. Okay. Um, could we also add when we do the tabulation what the dollar value is for the project, mm -hmm. so that that uh, mm -hmm. how many projects oh, we have? Yeah, we yeah. got quite a number. Sure. Of them. Yeah. And um, so I mean, if and, if and if a department has five, we're going to get five apps for each project. Yes. Right. But we are going to rediscuss because I don't have mine in front of me. We're going to discuss it again next week, right? Well, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, can. I agree. The amount of the ask. Well, I would like to know uh, how the much amount of the ask right, does it will make what it is, and and we might we'll make a difference. Yeah. yeah, and then and then we can maybe look at those collectively. And yeah. I mean, if they're asking for eight million dollars, maybe exactly. we can like say, okay, we'll we'll give you three or whatever. Right. Agreed. Agreed. So, yeah, okay. I think that does have a bearing. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Great. Anything else? So we'll we'll talk about this again in uh, next week. Um, courthouse is moving along. I see the ramp is uh, well the, underway. The ramp is being built. Yes. And uh, next week they're going to start with the fencing. And they're supposed to do the entrances to the uh, parking deck too, right? Yes. Yeah, so right now they're in the process of uh, restriping uh, the deck, and at the end of this week, I believe they they will be taking out the islands, and the ramp will be completed over the weekend, um, hopefully by hopefully by Friday. Um, and so on Monday, the main entrance to the courthouse will be the front. Uh, door. Um, I believe that the sheriff has already arranged for all of the uh, x-ray equipment and um, the metal detectors to be moved. Um, and next week they start the fencing and, and getting some of that site work completed. So we're, we're, we're moving along. Since that entrance was used. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember going in the old entrance. Stan, you probably yeah, remember that years yeah. and years ago. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. So. Good deal. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Do you have anything else? I don't, but I I don't know if you guys. <laughs> no, I might as well just stay up here. My comment was uh, um, at the uh, the NOACA meeting uh, last week. Um, I did vote to approve the long range transportation <coughs> plan. Um, I got an email from Grace Gallucci, the executive director, uh, and I believe it was Wednesday or Thursday before the meeting, uh, with a point by point. Uh, I, I can't remember her word bridge or something that she referred to it as uh, that, that connected the changes to the plan to the letter that we uh, sent uh, to NOACA with our concerns about the plan and, uh, and given her comments and there were a lot of changes to the language of the plan um, it wasn't perfect in my opinion or, or as, as, uh, as I would have written it but uh, they did make a lot of changes to it that that uh, changed the tenor of the plan and addressed the Medina County concern. So uh, that's all I have. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything else? No. Oh, Christina? Sure. When conversations spark something that I wanted to bring to the commissioners, when it comes to recovery money, it's interesting that Commissioner Hambly asked about um, 
if the health department was going to be doing vaccinations at the fairgrounds. So something that um, emergency management has assisted with the fair board probably for seven or eight years now is doing um, the planning. So we are part of and consistently attend um, their safety committee meeting. And something that we've wanted to accomplish but have struggled to figure out how to find the funding for is to put up a public safety services building at the fairground. So um, there's a number of entities that come together, as everybody probably well knows, that the fairgrounds and having a successful fair, a safe successful fair for not only participants but for residents um, is, is a huge planning effort and the way that the fairgrounds is currently set up with the dispatch building, LST has a small building if everybody can picture that and then we've been taking mobile command as our makeshift um, EOC, we do daily briefings. So something that we have tried to kick around is how can we potentially pay for and construct a public safety services building that would allow all stakeholders to do their day-to-day -day out of that location. We could get rid of that small dispatch um, location and the deputies and any law enforcement when they come in for their shifts, they do a small briefing. And if anybody has ever seen that, which I would probably most people haven't, you have a bunch of uniformed officers shoved in that little dispatch building trying to talk about what happened in the previous shift and then what is expected for the next shift. We can combine LST and then the health department. We wanted to partner with the health department knowing that they have their breastfeeding location. Um, so if recovery dollars could potentially be a consideration not knowing how the county is moving forward um, with that decision making that scoring sheet will be um, how they're prioritizing the projects is that the yeah, way that that's it, working first off it has to qualify okay under, under the arp program i i, I don't i don't know i'd have to look more at okay it. Uh, and we're expecting guidance to come out july 9th i think it's when so the, the final one the, the, guidance, the july final 9th. guidance so okay. it would the first threshold is would it qualify under the under the program okay good to know so many moving targets with that money, right? Mm -hmm. That's how it was for CARES well, funding, too. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, the current level of request was at least $62 million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, which is far exceeds what our anticipated yeah. total of uh, $14 million, correct? $17. 17 yeah. million. Sorry. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, that's the same for any of our grants that we apply for. Mm -hmm. The amount of requests always definitely far exceeds the pot of money that's available. But with the recovery, um, with the the scoring sheet when Commissioner Hambly talked about the county department versus the non-county department I'm not having seen the score sheet would there be consideration for if it's a county department that's applying what that impact is um, project wise so I think about the the building that we've been trying to figure out how to fund the impact to the, the positive impact to not only the community stakeholders but the residents is vast. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if there would be consideration I with this. I would consider EMA a county department. Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, but I, I mean but the. I, I just again I don't know that that the ARP money can be used yeah. to build a building. Right. I mean, in fact, I think at least from what I have read, it specifically says that it can't be used. Okay. To build. Now, if you have HVAC things that are related to the spread of, of viruses inside a building we can renovate that like we're doing a project at the county home specifically for that reason with this money is it covid driven or is it um it's there are certain is it, there are certain things that are there's five categories yeah. that are entirely non-covid in my opinion right like broadband Mm -hmm. um, and, that and, we can use the money for, yeah. but and the then water are, and sewer infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are other yeah. things that are more directly. Okay. But you could take the broad broadband argument and say the kids staying home well. from school needed internet. Th there are dominoes that fall with broadband. Uh, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's right. a matter of how connected it is. Right. Okay. But, right. but again, from what I have read, um, I, building buildings is generally not. Um, Okay. Wow. Okay. That, I, I, the the reason for my comment just to explain some of the proposals we received uh, really didn't have a clear county department, even though it might have originated from that. Uh, we had a 
uh, a program for those uh, that require, a, we'll, we'll just say, a low income and getting them vehicles so they can go to work. Uh, there wouldn't be a county department oversee that you might help support if you get to the effective terms of employment, uh, COVID related, if you will, but uh, to have maybe assist a nonprofit to do that. So that's why I was making the point like, well, there's some of these proposals really aren't. Uh, there you have a, maybe a county purpose and a county benefit, but they're not a county department. Definitely, yeah. We yep. likewise had a proposal from Harrisville uh, regarding a, a collaboration that are not directly related to a county department uh, unless you include economic development. I mean, like I said, uh, how much they're involved or have to be involved, uh, to me, that wasn't going to be the question. The question for me is, does it have a county benefit? How many people does it make sense? Does it meet the criteria and so forth? Yeah. So that's why I was less concerned about, like I said, I am less concerned whether it's a county department, uh, as long as it has a county purpose and county benefit, sure. as well as the other factors. Sure. So that's why I brought up that. And obviously EMA, I considered obviously, certainly as a county department. Do you wonder with the, the yes. Will you wonder with the project, um, you have the, the scoring sheet might consider um, the impact that it has on the community. If it, you yes. know, the oh, more exactly. impact that oh, it yeah. has, you would think the scoring is, exactly would be right. that much greater, you know, the lesser impact than the scoring would be lesser, so, yeah. okay. Exactly right. Okay, I'll wait to see the final guidance. Is July 9th then? Nine, what July 9th, okay. Final. All right, I appreciate it, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Christine. Anything else? No, oh, uh, motion. Well, uh, never mind, I'll bring it up. Uh, uh, talk to Christine about something else going on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Motion to, Motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call, please. Handley? Yes. Sweater? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Thank you, and have a great week. Christine, you got a second? Yeah.